Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, so excited to have a conversation um, with my, my esteemed colleague and, and, and client here. We're going to talk about how, what it's like to stand up a blockchain consortium, particularly what it's like on the front end and try and demystify some things. We'll have some fun, but really, really talk about what that's like in a, in a super interesting industry. We are very fortunate um, to be here today with, with my colleague and partner, Mike Prokop at Deloitte and also Rebecca Hoffman, who is representing the OOC. Do you guys want to give uh, some quick some quick background and intros? Rebecca? Yeah. Hi. Thank you, Rob. Um, thank you for asking me to be here today. Um, excited to always talk about this topic. So I am Rebecca Hoffman. I work for Equinor, um, a major Norwegian oil and gas blockchain uh, major Norwegian energy company um, in which I do innovation uh, for um, operations technology excellence around business efficiency. I focus on innovation and especially around blockchain technology. And part of that um, has led me to also have the privilege to be chairman of the board of the OOC Blockchain Consortium. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty big role when you think, and we'll get into this, but actually leading uh, a group of people on your end, Rebecca, and lots of different companies and lots of opinions, and how do you get everybody to collaborate? Um, so, so commendable job. It's, uh, it's really great to work with you on the project. Thank you. And Mike. Yeah, so thank you, Robin. Thank you, Rebecca, for joining us today as well. Uh, Mike Prokop. Uh, I reside in Houston. I've been with Deloitte for about six years now came to delay from industry. Um, I've been in energy and resources uh, pretty much my entire professional career uh, that started in New York about 35 years ago. So oil and gas, power and utilities uh, across the spectrum. Uh, I've had the good fortune um, as we dove into blockchain and di digital assets in the energy and resources space at Deloitte uh, to be named uh, the US lead uh, for those sectors, so blockchain digital assets for our advisory practice and uh, has given me the good fortune to work with people like uh, Rebecca and others in the industry uh, to come to these great solutions. So thank you for having me today. Yeah, that's great. And, and always fun. Mike and I have a lot of fun leading different industry segments in Deloitte, for sure. Um, and, and my name is, is Rob Massey. I am a tax partner at Deloitte, and I spend all of my time looking after blockchain and digital asset projects and clients. I do lead that function um, for the firm and looking forward to a nice conversation with this group today. Um, you know, there's more and more data that tells us that blockchain and digital assets are more and more relevant um, across all industries and geographies. A recent survey we just pushed out um, confirmed and 83% of the respondents, and this is crossing geographies and industries, 83% responded said that their company would lose competitive advantage if they don't address or adopt blockchain, which is pretty interesting um, when you think about that. So it's it's more than just a, it's more than just a, a hype topic, it would seem, if that many people believe that they need to pay attention and invest. So, um, so all the more reason to have a real conversation about what blockchain does in a consortium. And I think that most people don't think innovation and technology first when they think about energy and oil and gas. But Rebecca, you're going to correct us on that. I mean, you've been you, you've been leading us as we sprint toward a path of developing a consortium for, you know, your company and others in this space. Tell us, tell us why blockchain, what is so compelling about blockchain that is leading us down this path? Yeah. And so we believe blockchain is a team sport and it's the new competitive advantage is collaboration. So many of our members realize this from the very beginning. And therefore, the OOC blockchain uh, consortium was formed in January 2019 and is currently funded by 10 major oil and gas blockchain, uh, oil and gas operators. Uh, and we believe we're there to establish this funnel. Um, uh, around pain points of, of our industry and around that where we can use these use cases to create cost savings, increase efficiencies, and just reduce redundancies in our processes. These 10 operators share cost and we share and reduce the risk of R&D around the technology at which we get full benefit from that. So we currently have two pilots moving towards MVP this year, 
And we believe this um, approach is aiding us, will aid us by us being together, it will aid us in our adoption and scaling for the industry. So we need to do this together to make it happen on a grand scale. Any one of us can go do a pilot and we say, that pilot's successful. We've seen many, many successful pilots. Um, and it's time we come together and move past pilot. And so that's really what the consortium is about, is looking for those pain points that we have in common and then developing real things that bring real value to our companies. And is, is there something about, you know, blockchain itself? I mean, there's plenty of debates out there, blogs and, and elsewhere that say, oh, yeah, blockchain, whatever. It's just a, it's just another database. But why is there something compelling about blockchain as an underlying, you know, tech, technological based platform that enables you to do something unique? It does, because um, I get that question all the time. Well, I can do that in a shared um, database, right? And I, I think it all comes back down to you when you talk about blockchain, you hear a lot about trust and, or non-trust. And you hear a lot about, well, then who owns it and, it, you know, and data security and those things. This is allow, it's a platform that, that uh, finally has allowed us to all feel better about coming together. And when I say all of us, I don't just mean um, the operators, I mean the vendors, the oil field vendors and suppliers, every party that needs the regula regulators. Uh, there's so many parties um, that need to be involved in things. We're actually talking with an insurance consortium and talking about maybe a joint use case because we interact with banks, we interact with insurance companies, we interact even beyond our industry. So blockchain is allowing us to collaborate and to really um, fundamentally change, really transform the way we work to a seamless integrated way of working, uh, which is bringing back significant value once we can get a minimal viable ecosystem to all come on and, and utilize it. So we're very excited about where this can all take us. Love it. No, that was a, that was a great picture. Thank you. Mike, <laughs> you have been serving this industry for a lot of your career. Anything you want to add, you know, why blockchain and also, you know, why a consortium? You know, people today is our consortium's the right answer. Can you, do you want to lend your, your perspective there? Well, sure. I'm, I'm probably in the same company as many of the viewers today. I, I, my mind was just blown by now we have consortiums of consortiums. <laughs> so as, as Rebecca just pointed out, so, um, Look at the development that's even <laughs> happening now. Um, now, Rob, this this is it. It's you know that one word that always comes up uh, wherever we are is consensus, and whether it's the consensus algorithm that we know that uh, blockchain centers around, or the consensus, as uh, Rebecca very rightly pointed out, um, that has to be made between the participants of a consortium. It is those pain points, and more and more times than not, this is not about a a money-making opportunity for a group of companies. This is about efficiency. It's about the potential for cost savings. And it's really, in, in so many cases, not to, to so, you know, sound too uh, you know, high hat about this, but it's, it's really what is best for the industry. We have um, a hundred-year-old industry, if not more, in oil and gas right now, that in many cases is still doing things in a very manual way. Um, and what could take a month, maybe two, to, to move paper around and get reconciliations done, uh, we are on the cusp of doing things in hours, if not maybe a couple of days. That's the transformation that's happening. That's the thing that we're now realizing in this new Industry 4.0 overall. Um, and we saw it with the Internet when that came around, and now we're seeing it with blockchain. Uh, we truly are seeing transformative things of that level. Awesome. Great perspective. I know you see a lot of a lot of projects. Oh, <laughs> so <yeah. laughs> need to get need, need to see that validation. Yeah. Um, so Rebecca, we have um, we we've you know we spent a lot of time together, and I I will say you keep us very busy. Myself 
in particular, uh, from a tax perspective, answering really hard questions in rapid fire fashion about, you know, what does it mean in, in terms of structuring and the short term goals and long term vision. We spent a lot of time on tax, which I'm not I'm not sure that was all anticipated on everyone's front. Do you want to reflect on, you know, in the early stages of iterating toward this, any big ahas you want to share? Um, you know, we talk a lot of us talk about iterating through a project. Not everybody puts tax on the front end. So maybe just share some some insights there. So, Rob, you know, tax wasn't on our radar at all. <laughs> but we're so glad, um, it, it, absolutely glad that um, when we brought Deloitte on as, as um, you know, a strategic advisor, that you came in and said, this, this is a significant portion that you need to be thinking about. Um, and it was very helpful. Um, as consortiums grow and mature, um, which we're finding we're in this, what we are calling an inflection point of the consortium, we've actually, in a year and a half, done more than we thought we were going to in three years. And th that's a um, good problem to have, but at the same time, extremely challenging. And so we turned to discussions and um, we, we need to know what we don't know. And I think that's wise leadership is you step out and you say when you need help. And, and I believe the tax area has been a really big enlightening part of understanding um, the consortium. And then also as we move things to, to become real, um, what's the best way um, as a consortium and for the industry as a whole to embark upon these things so that we're not just building something that doesn't get used, but we're building things that actually move the needle and transform not only the member companies, um, but the industry as a whole. And that's what we need right now. Yeah. It's true. And, and you know, the, the industry evolves, technology changes, you know, members come and go, people do different things. And so, um, you know, that concept of flexibility is something that we've latched on a lot as we, you know, designing, you know, what is the, the early stages and what is the, the long term um, flexibility and structuring, you know, what, what you plan on doing, you know, short and, and the long term. So it's been it's been an interesting journey for us to help you iterate towards something that, that may work, um, including, you know, demystifying. I think for, for those, you know, listening out there, we all know there's a lot of stuff that's that's written in blogs or posts that maybe just not quite right or <laughs> overly simplifies things. We do our best to we do our best to kind of go through it methodically and make sure we're making um, you know, good decisions, eyes wide open, and uh, and you know, operate operate within bounds. Um, but so, Mike, I am one of many um, subject matter advisors that you have brought into this project as the leader, um, and I know there's a lot of other lenses that that we try and bring in. Um, can you think about how, when you're looking at these massive projects with lots of competencies represented and lots of complexities, and everything's shifting at the same time, how do you think about prioritizing? You know, one advisor versus another, how to how to order things or how to integrate. I see you doing this you know, with a lot of grace um, and a lot of patience. So how do you, you know, people we've learned, I've learned a ton going through this with this team, but any lessons learned? How do you think about that to share with others? Yeah, I, I think, Rob, the important thing, and hopefully, Rebecca, if you've noticed this, it, <laughs> is not to come in and just focus on the technology, okay? Um, we were just talking about tax, and we know taxes uh, and tax and one other unfortunate event in life are two things you can always count on. Um, <laughs> but, but for so many, so many different times um, in blockchain, in uh, you know whether it's an SAP implementation, things like that, you have to think of the ancillary uh, instances where you you may be leaving something uncovered or something unaddressed. And so what we try to do, and I try to do very uh, you know, for all of the things that I approach is, is there a tax element? Is there an audit element, you know, in and around controls and things like that? Uh, is there an element around the tech build itself that perhaps the consulting uh, area of a firm like ours could do or ourselves uh, with strategy and uh, business acumen and things like that in advisory? Um, so what I try to do is bring the power of the firm. I always try to refer to it as and uh, Rebecca, you're smiling. I think you you remember uh, you, you probably thought we were bringing all these these puffy stuffy people you know to early conversations, and literally here we still are. Um, stuffy? 
No, that's me. I'm talking about myself. So, um, you know, mm-hmm. we see some do that. Uh, some firms do that. And they, and then all of a sudden you, you end up with a lot of junior people. Uh, what we try to do is, is literally bring the biggest, the best and the brightest uh, that we've had, you know, years of experience working on things like this and um, get it done, get it done right, have a happy client and continue, you know? So uh, to your point, Rob, as, as you know, we call it, we have a, a little green dot that follows our name and our logo, right? And we, we refer to it as a green dot opportunity, which represents the entire firm, not just one of the four main functions. Um, and that's, that's the real value that I try to bring to all of these engagements. Yeah, that's important. Collaboration is important. It's not easy, right? And it's, uh, it can be a lot of people, can be a lot of people in the room or in the Zoom as it seems, right? How many people can you get on the screen at one time? Um, I mean, Rebecca, I guess it's the same on your side, right? You've got a lot of members, a lot of people with opinions, and even within those organizations, you're managing, you know, people and, and with all different competencies, including like like legal. The legal committee is is very vocal, and so you know, you've got a little bit the same role as Mike's, and even even bigger, trying to get everybody to collaborate. Any any you know words of wisdom? How have you how have you navigated that so gracefully? So, yes, lots and lots of stakeholders. Um, The consortium is actually, right now we're running three main projects. We have five technical committees. Um, We have an IT technical committee. We have a procurement and legal operations, and then also a policy and regulatory. Um, The the legal and the procurement are truly interesting, because if you think about smart contracts um, that run on the blockchain, um, that is going to completely change the way legal rights contracts, I believe, for the future, and then also how procurement negotiates them. So having these committees be able to start understanding, and like you've said, demystifying this blockchain Mm -hmm. and these smart contracts, um, how do we make that happen where uh, we can build some framework and guidelines and even some templates and tools for our companies to use where it's more of a plug and play, uh, where as digitalization happens and the feel, you know, our feels um, are digitalized with IoT sensors and, and other type drones and everything else, right? That type of information will then be brought up to the blockchain and things will happen um, they will get validated and then payments are made. Um, it, it's amazing. So that's um, that's kind of the things that we're testing out right now um, and seeing this large potential. But those technical uh, committees all have a role to play. Of course, IT um, is kind of a given you need that in, in this type of, of consortium. But that's probably 168 people last we counted all interacting in between those technical committees and the projects themselves and among themselves to make sure that um, we are building the future. And it's truly exciting. And I love it as one of the first things we did is when these 10 companies came on, I said, okay, we need you to have some volunteer resources. And I said, but please, Do not go and appoint anyone. I would rather you wait two weeks, three weeks, a month if you have to, and go find that forward-thinking person that you say, hey, you want to be part of a procurement committee in this blockchain consortium? And they go, yeah, that sounds exciting. I actually had one from my company do that, and I was like, Really? <laughs> so it, it's phenomenal because when you get them in the door that excited, real things happen, right? Um, so I would tell you if you go on a journey like this, um, get align yourself and find the people that are most excited. They don't even have to know blockchain. I mean, that's something that, that can be taught. Um, but they need to be innovative. They need to be open-minded and, and they need to want to bring about change. Um, and, and that part has been invigorating and I think has helped the consortium move forward in such a fast manner. 
Wow. It, what an interesting dynamic, because we talk about at the exact level how these companies come together, but I, I would just describe as interesting how that permeates down even at the committee level, because you've got representatives from each organization at the committee level, all with different ideas and different levels of excitement. So, yeah, how do you well, go ahead? And if you take that dynamic back, right, that's just within the consortium. And yeah. so now these 10 companies, all of these need subject matter experts then go back and bring that back into their companies to bring awareness into their companies and then there's all the stakeholder management within your own company that's going on in the learnings and so it, it is quite dynamic yeah and puts puts then a lot of pressure on you mike right when you're designing the the, the, the bigger picture it's like okay how do we then advise in in making this you know and allowing it to become a reality well, you think it's uh, a big responsibility and, and, a, and a big task, but I, I have to tell you, Rebecca is exactly right. And I think there are more than 168, actually. And I may have met them all <laughs> um, <laughs> because I, you know, I've been around. Uh, I am so impressed uh, that with the level of knowledge, expertise, willingness to try new things, that vision that everybody's sharing. And you know what? I hear the word cool a lot, too, in conversations, which is awesome, uh, because it is. Um, we have 10 major oil firms that are coming together with a vision, and many visions, actually. And we're, we're bringing them together. And within those firms are thousands and thousands of people that may or may not have that vision as well. And uh, one of the things I like to try to do in a lot of these engagements is win them over. Um, because that's, that is, again, the vision for tomorrow as well. We're not, we're not just going to be doing this for the next few years. This is transformational. Yeah. And I can't emphasize this enough that that will last decades, literally. Mm -hmm. um, and then something really cool when quantum computing comes around and everything else will, will be the next thing, right? But um, I doubt that it's going, to, uh, it's going to grow and sprout from what we're doing today. And, you know, truly... Um, we make experts out of experts, if you will, as well. We, we have to call them advisors, so subject matter advisors, but uh, the subject matter experts that you're bringing, um, uh, Rebecca, right now we have, I, I've, I've seen technology people start talking about tax policy, uh, <laughs> you know, and, it's, and again, it's, it's, this, it's this community that has to be formed in a consortium like this, mm -hmm. where everyone is aware or has some level of awareness of what's going on at all levels and it makes them better and it makes them think uh, more outside the box, if you will. Yeah. So. so Michael, I think you have a good point because mm -hmm. it's, it's not just about, um, it, it's about breaking down the silos through, through all the functions, whether, you know, it's a little bit of tax and a little bit of accounting and a little bit of operations and in within every part involved and all of their functions. It's powerful. Yeah, one of, one of the, the best and re most rewarding things that I've seen is, is having someone that, that, let's just use an example, someone that's in accounting and their main job is to process through a, a horrendous spreadsheet every week and, and they get, get it done by five on Friday and they're ready. And then all of a sudden they hear, well, there's this, there's this new transformational process coming in. Wait a second, it's a little bit scary. Is it gonna put me out of a job? And then actually to see the transformation of that person as they actually find out what it is, how they can help. Uh, I see people volunteer to bring the process in and they end up becoming the internal subject matter expert, as you call it, yeah. for that process. Because, you know, it can always be made better at some point. Um, and they, they have the knowledge of what's behind that process. That's, that's another really cool thing. So we're not just transforming industry processes we're helping people transform as well mm -hmm. now and I, I love the point that we see this all the time like helping people collaborate and truly understand the other competencies and how everything fits together because it can't just be people representing their own and and getting what you need it has to be truly understanding what everybody needs so you can everybody can understand those interdependencies and you get to a much better result because then it changes right you can iterate towards something new and sure. and so you can pivot more gracefully together if everybody just has that understanding that sensitivity 
Um, I love when we get excited about this stuff. So, so what are, right. Rebecca, there's so many use cases that are, you know, spoken about, you know, anecdotally that you guys are working on, some of which you put a lot of effort into. What are, you know, maybe, maybe you want to pick one that you are just super excited about um, that you see coming to life so that we can, we can kind of share that example. Well, Rob, the one I should say is the one that Equinor is leading. <laughs> so, yes. uh, but, but they're all three extremely interesting in their own right um, and purposely picked um, so that we could test different things. Okay. So I love that about each of the use cases that we started with. Um, but I'll give a highlight um, quickly is the water haulage. So we started with water um, on purpose because it was less risky, but really it can be applied now that, you know, it's getting, we're, we're seeing the pilot on it. We're realizing that, wow, that's just the tip of the iceberg. This could expand into oil. It could expand um, not only trucks, but pipeline and barges and so, so it's very exciting um, that that you could repurpose what you built over and over for a multiplicity of things. Uh, but in in its simplicity, it is taking an a validation point from one party and comparing it to a validation point digitally of another party or parties. Um, and within a upfront agreed tolerance, in our case, barrels, uh, you pay. Th nothing else needs to happen. No manual intervention. No one touches anything. You have agreed up front and the blockchain governs that for you. And if it is within what your agreement was, it pays. The and it creates the invoice. and. It pays it. Okay. I don't know how much more. We went out to test extreme automation. That's what we said. We are going to test extreme automation so that our engineers, um, to relieve our back office, but also for our engineers to never have to prove an invoice again unless it was an extreme exception, right? Mm -hmm. Some extreme thing happened. Um, the cool thing from the pilot that we just finished was we were seeing 87% results would have flown through without an engineer having to approve one invoice. Wow. Um, not touch a track ticket, you know, in the, in today's term, an actual paper, three carbon copy. We picked up this many barrels, um, <laughs> is left in a mailbox, right? And someone comes, picks it up and goes, keys it in a database. We know there's errors there. A 10 hour reconciliation back ridiculous the whole process we i think it's like 16 steps are literally put down to three um and it's all automated unless there's a very much need for dispute so we actually think for water this water haulage we can get it above 90 um where maybe only five or ten percent is having to go through a dispute resolution which we audited uh, we automated also um as much as you can so this is very, very exciting. Um, now you can back that into your comfort level. Uh, we are still, <laughs> when we did the user acceptance testing, it was great. So we had these 10 companies with all their subject matter experts test, doing user testing. And they, at first, were just so confused and frustrated. And they're like, and I come in and I'm like, what do you think? How's it going? And they're like, uh, there's, there's nothing. And I said, what do you mean? There's nothing. And it, like, there's nothing to push. There's nothing to do. And I'm like, that's the point. <laughs> it's extreme automation, but our companies are so used to wanting to do something. Right. So we then created them a dashboard so they can at least have visibility and see what's happening, but you don't have to necessarily do anything. Um, and now they're extremely happy and they, you know, the engineers are like, great. Can you get this to 100 <laughs> percent? Love it. Oh, my gosh. You talk about extreme automation and carbon copies in the same segment. I love it. That's a pretty <laughs> <laughs> transformative. Three, three, four, four. 
like what, 50 years? What did we advance there, 60 years? This, this is a 60-year-old manual paper-based process that it. we have taken to um, extreme automation. Love it. And it's Rob, I, I will guarantee that penmanship in the field has <laughs> never improved in that 60 years. So. Agreed. Uh, Love it. You sound like a man of experience there, Mike. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I used to finance barrels out, out of there in the uh, factoring group. So, yep. Oh, my you God. Know. I love it. So so this is one of many um, that we're seeing. And, and Rebecca, tremendous story with, with Water Haulage. Um, what about, you know, um, Mike, what, what are you super excited about on your end? Well, two things. So, Rebecca, and you glanced on it, but I think it's very important because, you know, we, we talked about water haulage, but really commodity haulage. So one one of the things that that your group, your consortium, went down the trail on um, is you realize additional value after you started your original concept, right? So you're you're willing to let's let's I just coined this up. You will you were willing to transform the transformation uh, on the fly, if you will, because you now brought in not only the the removal of salt water from the field, water haulage but also the, the removal of the commodity itself, which is the oil coming out of the ground. So um, different uh, people in the ecosystem, different trucking companies, different participants, uh, even different regulatory responsibilities. The, the minimum right. viable eco ecosystem just got more minimal, <laughs> bigger, uh, <laughs> less minimal, right, more, more maxi, if you will. But um, yeah, and that, and that very, very forward looking. And that was fantastic because that path to success for both of those processes was made easier by the original um, undertaking that you did. So fantastic on that. Yeah. And, and the really amazing thing we're seeing is that one of our other use cases, which is we're calling it an integrated joint venture management, uh, which deals with the AFE, which is your budget and how you bill out your partners. We're now seeing that those pieces are beginning and endings um, that we can hook to even the water haulage or commodity haulage as we're now expanding it, um, where you really get a seamless integrated way of working from your when you first budget it, these costs are gonna, you know, your estimates and to what actually in real time is being shown from the field and it's reducing your budget as you're watching on the screen. And then it builds your partners. I mean, that that's the future over the next um, eight months wow. is, is we're working on building that piece out now also. So very exciting. Um, ConocoPhillips is leading. I love that about the consortium. Different companies are sure. picking up and championing, sponsoring different projects. But then we all get to participate in them and get the value and the benefit out of them. I love it. And it really has reaffirmed, I think, the consortium model, right? The ability to collaborate with fewer constraints, more flexibility, right? It's a great, um, I think you know, there's, there's plenty of myths out there about consortiums, but I, I love this example because it really is coming to life. And, um, and it's just Well, and you back. have the actual users involved, right? The yeah. users are having a say in building what they want for their future. So it's, right. it's just amazing. Very cool. I mean, so it's it's funny. So mine, I love what you guys are doing with Seismic because I think I've been dealing with, you know, IP protection stuff for a long time as it relates to blockchain and smart contracts and how that works. But to me, like how amazing when you have, and, and here's, you know, Mike, because I'm not an only gas person, but but taking, you know, these seismic, it's it's not easy to 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 take these these seismic, you know, there's the soundings and and you know, you capture these tremendous these graphs, these pictures that are useful for, you know, people go back and reference these things for years or decades even. But when you take when you take the effort to produce that that data, that output, right, that is yours. You own that. But people wanna people wanna access it. But, but every one of those things is is owned and protected sometimes by multiple parties. And so to wrap a smart contract around that and then allow access via blockchain and re, re, and, and, and allow you know real time remuneration to the parties that that own the rights to that IP, even in little itty bitty pieces, 
is tremendous. I have I have a client which, which actually owns some of these rights, um, not associated with the consortium, and and me doing their tax returns. I mean, sometimes I'm like, you know, what is this like? What is this random like two dollars sitting? Why, why are you even bothering this? Oh, we just got the check <laughs> like from five years ago because somebody went through and reconciled it. And so there's these little realities, yeah. these like microtransactions associated with IP protections that we see all over different industries. And we see it here in oil and gas with seismic. So I love how we see that um, transpire there and how that will change, you know, the industry and, and how you look at, you know, the investments in, um, in exploration. So I love it. Yeah. Very Rob, cool. That's one. It's a great use case. We're very excited about that one also. Um, and we have geophysicists and geologists and all involved in this that are saying we want this changed how we work today. Um, okay. When we when we sold a property, um, an asset, it took us four months just to transfer over all the seismic. It, it's that's too long. You're right. So having better processes between the different parties, um, very another very transformational type of use case. That's fantastic. Very cool. So, okay, so we talked about this great stuff. Where's the hurdles? What's what's standing in our way? What's what's the one challenge yeah. you see in front of us that's stopping all these from becoming a reality? We'll just kind of do a, a rapid fire. What's what's on your mind? I, I want to say, everyone listening, it's you. You need to learn to change. <laughs> Oh, it's change right. management. Yeah. Sorry, I was pretty direct. Good. It's that's true. Good. We have biases, right? Even myself, I find, and I'm very innovative and very excited about change. But then when it comes down to it, it's just darn hard. So yeah. when you get in your company and you're doing your day to day job, well, SOX control say this. And, you know, um, my policy says this. And we're man mandated to only do this. And and so I think it's going to have to be questioning um, the, the status quo and saying, look, if you truly want to work in a whole new way that is, that is going to bring significant value to your company, um, you're going to have to accept that things are going to have to change and not in one silo change. But you're going to have to get all the functions together to understand the benefit for each one of them. And then when you add that up holistically, that's where the value really gets to be significant. Love it. Love it. Everybody open to change. Even the bean counters over here. Right? We can all change. <laughs> Mike, Mike, how about you? What are the hurdles? What are the hurdles you see in front adoption, of you? Adoption, 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 adoption. <laughs> um, whether it's pets like at my fee right now or Blockchain use cases, um, and that's it. It's it's the uh, is it a hurdle? I, I think it's a challenge. Um, identifying the value to industry, thus promoting adoption. Um, it's it's a hurdle for some and a challenge for others, and yeah, that's what we love to do. I love it. Well said. Um, I'm not. Oh, Rebecca, go ahead. Yeah, I think I think to see, this is a great point, Mike, because to see the value, we all need to use it. So if just one or two use it, yeah, they're going to see a little bit of value. But the value comes when you have every trucking company using, you know, in the, in the water haulage situation, right? So if all the trucking companies use it and they're seeing all a 25% benefit to their back office and maybe getting paid faster, and then the operators then see, you know, a 25% back office benefit, and um, reductions in costs um, in ha not having to touch so many things. So it's bringing all that together of the value for every party um, and having them have that awareness, what Mike said. But until they all, you get this minimum ecosystem all using it, do you really see the true transformational value? Yeah. That's well right. said. And another compliment to your group, Rebecca, they, just the, the the way everyone sits back and looks at the entire ecosystem and every facet of the industry and how open you are um, as a group to welcome these other parts and see how they can be transformed as well. Um, so it is truly, uh, from an industry standpoint, truly transformational. Yeah. 
No, it's good. Best in class, and uh, and and such a pleasure to collaborate with with both of you. I know we're all faced with new challenges every day in bringing this forward, but um, the, you know the collaboration, the patience, well exercise, the dedication—it's it's just awesome. So great to be a part of it. Um, really appreciate you both spending time with us today, and um, look forward to many good stories as these use cases come to life and transform the industry. So thank you again, both of you. Thank, thank you. you.